Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Yazalea and today I'll be showing you how to create an animated flag in Adobe After Effects just like this one. Alright, so that looks pretty cool. We're not going to be using any stock footage, we're going to create this from scratch. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and let's create a cool flag background animation uh, just like in the preview. So right here I have some images, I have a flag and a fabric which we will be using to cover the flag kind of texture right here. So the first thing that I'll do is create a new composition by clicking on the new composition icon. I'm going to rename it flag, make it full HD, so 1920 by 1080, 10 seconds long should be OK and then click OK and I will drag and drop my flag into that composition. We'll make it as big as this composition just to fill up the screen and then just move it a little bit to my preferences. Then I will click on that flag and go to layer and pre-compose it with all the move attributes into the new composition and rename it to flag comp. Then next I will press S on the keyboard and just lower the scale uh, so we have some space around our flag to actually animate around. So um, now I'm just going to go to layer again, pre-compose it once more, flag resized, click OK. So now we have a flag in a composition with some white space around it. If we toggle the transparency background, we can see that we have some space be, um, well around it so we can actually animate uh, the displacement of the edges as well. Then next I want to create a new composition and this is going to be our displacement composition. So we're going to rename it displacement comp, which is quite logically. So we'll click OK and now we're going to jump into one of the coolest effects of Adobe After Effects and that's creating a new solid and we're going to rename this to Fractal Noise. So Fractal Noise allows you to do a ton of things in Adobe After Effects. Uh, so in this case, we're going to use it to create some kind of displacements uh, to create the shadows and the animation. Everything is going to be done with Fractal Noise. So uh, we're not using stock footage in this case. So I'm going to go uh, head over to Effects and then Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. So in here we have a few settings we can adjust, it's completely up to you, I would suggest that you play around, we're just going to kind of run through this quickly and get some kind of decent result, uh, but then it will be up to you to uh, play around with each setting until you find something that you really love. So for the fractal type you can play around here, I will go for a dynamic progressive. And then you can also lower the complexity to something like 1 or 2 or 3. Uh, just play around with it until you see something that you like on screen. So uh, for me that will be 3 in this case. And you can play with the noise type which is a soft linear, a linear or a spline. And a spline is also really cool because actually the shadows and the edges that are going to be animated are more gonna be like a spline. So if you play around with uh, the complexity once more, you can see that this is getting a little bit closer to the displacement I'm looking for. Then next I will open up the transform tab and I will animate the evolution also a little bit. So. On the evolution, we have this stopwatch. We hold Alt on the keyboard and click on that stopwatch. That allows us to enter an expression. This is gonna be a very simple one, time times 25. So what I will do is just over time, it will multiply, well, every second or every frame, it's going to multiply uh, with that value. So it actually gets some kind of movement. So you can see that now our fractal noise has some variation going on during our time. Next what I want to do is move my displacement forward so it looks like the wind is moving forward. You can go move uh, forward and up a little bit or down a little bit, that's completely up to you. I will just do forward but I will explain you how to do the rest as well. So right here in our fractal noise we have the offset turbulence and that's what we want to animate. If you see uh, this moves it forward, this moves it down, up and yeah, everything you can do in here. Alt and click on the stopwatch again and again we're going to use an expression. So in this case I will open my bracket and then close my bracket, move uh, one back so with the arrow, we'll go in the center of these brackets and I will write value, open bracket again, zero, close a bracket, comma, value, open a bracket and one close a bracket. 
So what that will say is actually it will look at the value of zero, which is X, which is this one, and then value from one, which is this one. So it actually just copies these settings. So basically this expression doesn't do anything. Uh, if you move this, it still works. Everything just works fine. But what we want to do is actually look at X, which is zero. And behind the bracket here, we can add some expressions. For example, plus time times 400. And if we do that, we can actually see that now it's moving forward constantly. So we have no time limit. We can make this composition as long as we want to. We can do everything, but it's just going to loop. Well, actually, it's going to continuously uh, add this expression and move it forward. So if you want to do that for the up or down, you can go here at the end of one and then also multiply this by, uh, well, plus time times 100, for example. And now you will see that it's moving down if you look closely or you can go and multiply it by negative 100 and that will move it up just like this. So I'm going to undo that for now. I just want to move it forward and I have it right here. So this is our animation. Maybe you want to go back into the evolution and uh, kind of change this to, to 50 and see what that will do. So this is way too much, for example. So I will just go for 50 or something. Just minor details that change while it's moving forward. So that's great. Now what we can do is play with the transform settings. So I'm going to uncheck uniform scaling and we can play with the sizes here. So we want to make it look like a flag kind of shadow kind of movement. So let's say this is our first one. We can click on our layer and go to edit and duplicate this layer and just continue. Uh, well, give it a different style right now. So maybe you want to make it a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, uh, something like that. Maybe you want to add more brightness or less brightness, completely up to you. Then you can change blending mode over here to something like multiply, which is going to cover up, um, well, the layer below it. We can press T on the keyboard to lower the intensity of that effect. And now we have like a layered effect of these two. Of course, you can also play around and change this one, for example, to 300, have the other one at 400, and you will see some kind of differences in the background. Again, completely up to you. Let's duplicate it one more time. And in this case, I want to uh, set it back to normal, press T on the keyboard and set it to 100 so we can concentrate on our look here. I'm going to lower the contrast and maybe make it all a lot smaller. and add more complexity, there we go. And just less brightness or less contrast. Something like that and change it to multiply. And also lower the effects here. So now we have some stacked effects and again, uh, just play around with everything. Okay, so I think this kind of look, uh, looks good for a uh, flag. So let's try and see what we can do with this one. So go back to your flag composition and go to your project manager and you will see your displacement comp right here. Drag this into your current uh, composition. We're going to uncheck this so we don't see it. It's not visible. Then we want to click on our flag resized and we want to press S on the keyboard to just scale it up. Uh, the reason why is uh, in this case, we're just going to do a background. So I'm going to affect distort and displacement map. So currently it's not doing anything. It's using the current layer as a displacement, which looks kind of weird. But if you go to displacement map layer and we choose displacement comp, we can actually use that comp as a reference to displace this image from. So if we set this to like 25 by 25, we can see now our image is displacing and we have our flag animation. Really cool. The only downside here is that we don't have any depth in our flag. It looks kind of flat and in some cases that might work in, uh, for example, cartoons. But we want to make it a little bit more realistic and we want to add some shadows in there. To do that, click on your displacement comp, press Ctrl D on the keyboard or edit duplicate to duplicate that layer. We're going to make it visible again. So now we have it right here. Change the blending mode to something different. You can play around with multiply or you can go for a linear light. Um, in this case, I will use linear light. I kind of like this one and I will press T on the keyboard to lower the intensity a little bit. 
And if we're going to play this, now we have some shadows in our displacement. And that's basically it. So if we're going to multiply, we can see some different values here. Maybe this looks a little bit better in the shadows here. And uh, I mean, linear light. They both kind of look pretty good. So let's see. Alright, so that looks really cool. One thing we can do to enhance our flag to make it a little bit more realistic is jump into that composition of our flag, double click and open everything. And in that flag you can go to your project manager and apply a fabric texture. So I imported here a fabric and this kind kind of looks good but it doesn't really look like a flag but you can just uh, look around. But this is a tileable one so that's what you're looking for and if we're going to drag this on top of our flag um, we can see that these pores are a little bit too big for the flag size. So we're going to press S on the keyboard and just lower it to something that looks a little bit more realistic. And then we're going to head over to Motion Tile in the Effects Controls, uh, well, Effects and Presets. Just search Motion Tile and apply that to your fabric. And here we can just increase the width and the height to kind of loop it together. And now we have this fabric. We can use this, multiply, and now we have some fabric in our flag. As you can see, if we toggle it on and off, we do have some more detail in our flag, which is what we're looking for. We can also scale it down even more. And then just make sure that it's wide and tall enough. And there we go. So now go back to your main composition and you'll see that you have a little bit more detail in your flag. Uh, and it makes it more realistic in my opinion. So that's pretty cool. Another thing you can do is right click new and go for an adjustment layer. And rename this to vignette. Drag this on top of all the layers. And go to effects, color correction, curves. Drag it down. Go to the ellipse tool right here, double click on that. That's going to make a circle right here in your composition and we're going to subtract that mask. Then press F on the keyboard and feather it out. And now you have this kind of nice vignette that darkens the edges right here. We can also lower it maybe here. And make it a little bit darker. And now it's kind of concentrated on the center of the flag, which is also really cool. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more. And definitely check out our website. We have a bunch to offer for filmmakers and motion graphics artists. And if you buy something from the website, it really helps to support this channel. So that would be really awesome. Apart from that, I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.